Hey everyone, welcome to the first talk of the API security track. Uh, we really appreciate you all joining, supporting the API Days community. Um, our first talk is going to be from David, um, who should be joining the room here any second. Hey David, how's it going? Hey, good, how are you doing Tyler? I am excited to learn all the things about API security. Uh, it's been a, a hot topical space these days, and um, I think it's it's finally the, the day and time for API security to, to dominate the conversation and for us to spend more time thinking about it. So um, David is the Worldwide Director of Solution Architecture at No Name Security. And David, I will pass it over to you, my friend. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Tyler. Appreciate the introduction. Uh, so first, before I get started, I just want to say that we have a, uh, uh, a, a just a couple of slides to present with you for you today. But uh, No Name also has a big uh, announcement to make today, and that is that we closed a B round of venture capital of uh, $60 million, which brings our two rounds uh, since December of 2020. So just uh, seven, eight months, uh, up to $85 million in venture capital in a relatively short period of time. So we're really excited about what this market does. And, and obviously, the, uh, uh, the forecasters are saying that this is going to be a big deal uh, uh, this year and, and moving on uh, from this year. So uh, let, me, uh, let me just get to my slides. And so... Why now? Why is this a big deal? Why is it a big deal now? Why are the venture capitalists pouring money into this? And why are uh, APIs such a big deal? Well, I think there's finally being the realization that APIs are mission critical. So many companies today can't do their business if it's not for their APIs. They have to make them available. Uh, we hear the example all the time. Uh, you know, Black Friday is three days from today. And we have to have this API out to make it, it work for our environment. Uh, and so as a result, that API gets deployed. It's absolutely critical to make the revenue numbers for the year. And that creates the conflict between the security and the dev, dev team. So the development velocity and the security team are, are constantly in conflict. And that's, that's a big issue. Uh, and then you add to that the fact that most big organizations today are in multi-cloud, multi-hybrid environments with uh, multiple different API gateways, with different web application firewalls, with uh, uh, all kinds of different uh, infrastructure. And all of a sudden, this leads to a situation where there is plenty of opportunity uh, for APIs to be under attack. So it's, it's a big deal. Uh, and we are seeing this more and more. In fact, how big of a deal is it? Well, if you just look at what's happened, we I can't even keep up with this slide. Uh, we created this slide uh, maybe a week ago, uh, and of course there's been multiple API uh, attacks since then, uh, the largest of which you may have heard about in the past week, which was LinkedIn, uh, with over 700 million records uh, uh, exposed via an API. Uh, and so, you know, all of these different things have happened in, in just the most recent uh, weeks and months. Uh, it's funny because I, I started using a slide uh, back when I started with uh, No Name uh, in November, and uh, it had this quote in it from Gartner that by 2022, API abuses will become the most frequent attack vector. Uh, in a conversation I had with some of the Gartner analysts in the past couple of months, uh, one of them told me, yeah, we blew it. And I was like, uh-oh, it's not such a big deal. It's not going to be the most frequent attack vector. He said, no, it, it already is. Uh, he said, this is already uh, the biggest attack vector. We blew it by a year. It came a year earlier than we expected it to be. Uh, so that's, that's interesting stuff uh, coming from Gartner. Um, but today, what I really want to spend uh, the bulk of my time talking about is this API security strategy uh, that we have developed uh, at No Name. And we really hope that, that this gets uh, adopted by others uh, in the organization. We're not doing anything to copyright this. We hope that other companies and other organizations will pick this up and run with it and utilize it. Uh, and I don't think anybody argues, and I'm going to go into uh, each of these pillars of the DART security strategy individually, uh, but I don't think anybody would argue that discover and analyze you know, are absolutely right up front the most important part uh, and have to get those things done first 
before you can really even effectively remediate or test. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of, of what I'm talking about, but uh, discovery, for example, um, you know, you have to find an inventory, all of your APIs, whether they're legacy, modern, rogue APIs, it doesn't matter what format they come in, whether they're SOAP or REST or GraphQL, uh, our GRPC, you have to find all of them. And oftentimes what we find is that only 30, there's 30 to 40% of the APIs in any given environment that aren't going through an API gateway or a web application firewall. So, this is a big deal uh, with all of these rogue and zombie and uh, disabled or uh, deprecated APIs not being utilized and although being still existing in the environment, uh, they create a threat vector. They create an attack surface by which somebody from the outside could potentially get access uh, to data that is transmitted by those APIs. Uh, the second stage analyzed, it goes beyond analyzing just behavior. We hear a lot about behavior analytics uh, and artificial intelligence, machine learning used to identify anomalous behavior within APIs. And, and that's great. We do that. It's, a, it's a, certainly a part of it. But analyzing the API infrastructure and the entire uh, landscape, if you will, around the APIs is absolutely equally important. Uh, so being able to look at what the infrastructure is, what the, how the API gateways are configured, how EC2 instances are, are configured in an AWS environment, how virtual machines and load balancers and web application firewalls and even standard firewalls uh, are configured in order to be able to see how those APIs uh, are managed, how they're used, uh, is extremely important to identifying the overall attack surface that uh, somebody could compromise your APIs with. So it goes long be, uh, well beyond just analyzing the schema of the APIs or the way that they're deployed. And then the last two uh, pillars of the API security strategy are remediate and test. And so remediate, I look at from two different perspectives. I look at semi-automated as well as fully automated remediation. And let's start with the fully automated because there are some things for which you can automatically uh, take action associated with something that you see in the environment. And it could be a misconfiguration in order to fix that misconfiguration. It could be uh, an attack that you're seeing in the environment and then you need to block that attack or you need to uh, block the API, you block the IP, revoke the user's credentials. All of those kinds of things can be done to remediate attacks. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk more about, again, those in a minute. And then finally, um, the test uh, pillar of the API security strategy is all about being able to test APIs throughout their life cycle, before they're deployed and even after they're deployed in an operational environment so that you can see that they continue uh, to provide the greatest uh, security that they can possibly provide uh, in this environment. So I'm gonna move on from here and let's talk about discover. So what about APIs should you discover? Well, what type of sensitive data is the API interacting with? And again, you wanna be able to see everything within the API, the entire schema. Uh, is it processing PCI data, PII data, PHI data? Uh, all of those are, are very, very important. And then every single uh, user of the system may have a different data type that they consider to be sensitive. So you want to be able to identify those data types, even if they're specific to your organization. And when I think about this, I look at uh, financial institutions that may have loan numbers, for example, that have a specific data type within their organization or a specific format. And they wanna be able to identify if a loan number is being exposed through uh, an API. You also need to be able to tell how that API is routed. You have to discover whether or not it's going through the API gateway or whether it's directly accessible to the internet, maybe going through a, a load balancer or some other device that somebody has deployed in the environment. Um, and then what is the associated physical resource? Uh, you know, I've been in the cybersecurity space for a long time. And one of the challenges that we have had many times uh, is just identifying what's the source of this data. Where is it coming from? What is the the EC2 instance or the virtual machine where this particular 
uh, API is coming from. And sometimes it's easy as doing a DNS lookup, but sometimes it's significantly more difficult than that because of the different devices that it may go through and the NAT translation and all those. So being able to link that back to a physical resource very, very quickly and being able to discover that and associate it with the API we believe is a, a very important part of building a database or a catalog of everything that you need to know uh, about your APIs. And then which API or business unit it belongs to. Uh, again, coming from the security space, one of the things that we were, have always been challenged with is security platforms had a tendency to create a lot of alerts. And security teams tend to suffer from alert fatigue. And you, know, you can say that we're whining, <laughs> and, and I think in some cases that would be fair. Uh, but the truth is a lot of the things that the security teams are responsible for securing aren't really under the purview of the security team and APIs uh, are certainly a big part of that. Uh, in this day and age, APIs are, you know, have a development team with a business unit behind them. Then the business unit handles it, hands it off to the DevOps team uh, and maybe a Dev, DevSecOps team in order to get that API deployed in a proper way. Uh, and at the end of the day, when there's an issue associated with that API, the security team really has very little uh, to do with the fix. It usually has to go back to that DevOps team or that development team or the DevSecOps team to figure out what it is that needs to be fixed in that particular API. Well, a good discovery capability will also be able to look into that API and discover which business unit it belongs to. Maybe it's by the top level domain, or maybe it's by some other information in the header, uh, but they'll be able to take that information then and sort it into a particular group, which then will be assigned to that business unit. And that way, any alerts generated associated with that API go back to the right uh, organization to take care of it. And again, uh, the owner of that API is certainly uh, associated with that, typically with that business unit or the app. A couple of other things that are really important to discover uh, about APIs is where do these fall uh, within our data governance? Uh, you know, is this a data type that is governed by PCI or PHI? Uh, we need to know those kinds of things and then to be able to develop reports that show that we are doing the right things to secure those APIs and those data types that they aren't leaking out of our organization and that they have the proper protection wrapped around them. Uh, and then finally, you know, how those APIs uh, fit ergonomically uh, within our organization. Uh, so let's move on. Analysis. Uh, analyzing, as I mentioned earlier, when I was doing the high level of the, uh, of the DART API security strategy is, is very important. And again, not just associated with uh, the traffic or the communications of those APIs, but also with every single device and every single process that manages those APIs. So uh, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of misconfigurations that can lead uh, to API security vulnerabilities. Uh, you know, examples are an API that's lacking a, uh, um, an OWASP policy or an API that has accidentally been opened up directly to the internet. Uh, let me give you an example of, of, of how that happens, by the way. In, in today's expanding cloud environments, we see this happen all the time. I, I can't even begin to tell you how many organizations we have worked with that have, uh, where we've been uh, deployed and doing our business in their environment, and we discover that there are internal APIs that are accidentally open to the internet. Essentially what happens is, they stand up virtual machines. Those virtual machines communicate with each other through APIs. Uh, they're transmitting data back and forth. A lot of times those uh, APIs are going through API gateways if they're being exposed out to an external source or an external uh, customer. Uh, but then somebody else in the environment, in the account, if you will, in the, in the cloud account, stands up another virtual machine and another virtual machine. And then a load balancer to load balance across those and that original virtual machine somehow gets brought into that, that cluster to be load balanced across. And now those APIs that are in that original uh, EC2 instance or in that original virtual machine are now exposed through the load balancer straight out to the internet and can completely evade or bypass, if you will, the API gateway. What does that mean? They don't 
get the protection of the API gateway. They don't get the authentication mechanisms of the API gateway. Uh, they don't get the rate limiting or maybe an OWASP policy applied to them because of the way that they're exposed now. Those kinds of misconfigurations can be analyzed uh, by looking at the entire infrastructure of the organization. And that's how you identify all of those kinds of things uh, within the environment. Uh, the second part of the analysis is of course anomalies. Uh, Anomaly-based behavior detection is very, very important. Uh, and low false positive rates are, are super critical. I come from a, a background of uh, intrusion detection, intrusion prevention systems. And uh, you know, back in the days, I remember us being compared to a barking dog. We had so many false positives that uh, after a while, you just stop listening to the dog. Um, and then one analyst even said we might go out and shoot the dog because there was so many uh, false positives. I don't recommend that. Um, but uh, we definitely want to be aware of the false positives and make sure that uh, anything that we do is not looked at like a barking dog. We want it to be as effective and as low of a false positive rate uh, as possible uh, within the environment. So let me move on to remediate. So remediate uh, is really the key uh, to being able to do something. It's the actionable part of discovering and analyze. If you discover and analyze and stop there, you haven't solved the problem. You still have a lot of work to do in order to be able to fix what has, what has been demonstrated in your environment as an issue that needs to be resolved. And remediation needs to be applied not only to the active events, the attacks, the uh, security issues that are going on, but also uh, all of those misconfigurations and those kinds of things that can be analyzed by looking at the infrastructure uh, and the environment. So I like to break remediation down into uh, two topics. Um, Beyond the, we have prevention and integration here on this on the slide, but I like to talk about automated and semi-automated uh, remediation. Uh, semi-automated remediation is simply, I've got an issue, I need to fix it, but I need a man in the middle to be able to do it, and so I want, and, and by man in the middle, I'm not talking about somebody breaking your uh, encryption, uh, but talking about having a human that will push a button that says this integration now will take this particular action. I'm not ready to fully automate it yet, and so I want to be able to do that. So remediate might be anything from building a trouble ticket that goes straight to DevOps, and then DevOps identifies the fact that this particular uh, API is exposed to the internet, and they uh, delete that public IP address or remove that route so that that API has to go back through the API gateway. Uh, that might be one way to remediate. Another way might be to use something like a security orchestration automation and response tool which gives you the ability to manually trigger each step in the process and take some sort of remediative action, or to, once you have the confidence that that remediative action is, is good, then you can fully automate it. And now, whenever that particular type of an event occurs again, it gets fully automated and fully remediated. And that could come all the way down to, for example, blocking attacks in real time. And let me give you an example of a prevention uh, type of remediation. Uh, we see this a lot with people trying to brute force an API. So they're doing credential stuffing. They typically have a number of steps that'll be identified, whether it's uh, uh, directory traversal, cross-site scripting, something like that, that'll get picked up before they uh, actually try the, the brute force. And then they get into the API, they get access to, they can see that there's an API at this particular point, and now they want to start utilizing some brute force techniques, and you'll see a rapid number of attempts to break into that particular API. Well, because of that history of events leading up to that, you can say, I saw this and this and this, and now I've seen 15, 20, 30, 100 failed logins on this particular API. Let's just block that IP address. And so now we can block that IP in real time, make sure that that user doesn't have the opportunity to find the credentials that they need in order to break into it, and we can block it very, very quickly. Um, what that requires is that inquire, requires integration with the existing uh, infrastructure, whether it's with the firewall, whether it's with the uh, application gateway, 
uh, whether it's with the a web application firewall or even the authentication system, because in some cases you may want to uh, revoke someone's token. Uh, for example, if you can see that they're, they are doing a broken object level authorization attack, and I'm going to assume uh, that everybody knows what a BOLA or a broken object level authorization is. If you don't, uh, feel free to go out to uh, 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 OWASP API Security Top 10, and you'll see it. It's number one on their list. And then finally, and I'm, I'm running out of time here, so I want to go quickly and talk about the fact that I love all of the activity that goes around shift left as a security guy, anything that we can do to build security into processes and into code and into uh, a better deployment is always welcome. That's, that's super important to me. Uh, but it's not the end of the end all and be all. And as a result, we need to be able to continuously test APIs even after they're put into production. So that means being able to try and test those BOLAs, to be able to test those uh, credential uh, vulnerabilities associated, for example, with JWT vulnerabilities, uh, basic authentication vulnerabilities, all of those kinds of things. We want to be able to take care of those uh, both pre and post uh, production for that particular API. That kind of wraps up my uh, my talk about uh, the uh, the Dart API security strategy: discover, analyze, remediate, and test. It's really simple to, to remember, and it applies across the entire software development lifecycle. So at this point, I'm going to stop, and uh, I think Tyler's going to come back and let me know if there's any questions. David, thanks so much for the thoughtful talk. Um, you know, As we, we opened up the conversation with API security, it seems it's finally getting the attention that it deserves. A um, few questions. Um, I think uh, I can kind of summarize a, a few of them together. You know, there's so many competing needs for ProdSec engineering security today, right? You know, we're combating malware, phishing attacks, endpoint detection. Um, what would you say to the engineering leaders, heads of API platform management, the CISO or the ProdSec org uh, to help prioritize thinking about fortifying API infrastructures and protecting those digital assets? I think the first thing I would say is that you can't protect what you can't see. And while most of those other threat vectors that you just mentioned, there are tools, and I think a lot of companies already have those tools to be able to see into those capabilities and to be able to protect against them. Phishing attacks, for sure, we have all kinds of technologies around those, you know, malware attacks, those are, are well represented by all of the anti-malware uh, platforms that are out there today. But today, I think the big challenge with API security is that there are few of us out there that have the ability to do anything around the discovery of APIs. When I talk to CISOs today, I can't find CISOs that can even tell me how many APIs they have, much less what's in those APIs. Uh, I love to ask the question, how many APIs do you have? And the answer is uh, always a, a shrug. I really don't know how many APIs we have. Or so, or, yeah. or you get three different answers from three different people, and, and that's equally as concerning, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And Or it's completely wrong. And, and I, I love the, the CISO that guessed, right? He said, I have X number, and it turned out to be two <laughs> times a factor, uh, you know, two times that number plus one magnitude of <laughs> uh, higher, you know, so... It's, it's crazy, yeah, that they're just, they have, they really don't have an idea of what the business unit has been exposing them to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think there's any malice in that process. It's just that the business unit is moving so fast that they don't have time to, uh, to be able to keep the, the security team appraised of everything that's going on from an API perspective. Yep, we all have to move at the speed of DevOps, and when you move that fast, uh, mistakes happen. Well, David, thank you so much. Um, really appreciate it. It's a it's a timely value prop you guys are offering. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Tyler. Appreciate your uh, uh, introduction and MC in this, and thank you to the folks at uh, uh, API Days and Interface for the for the opportunity to speak this morning or this yeah this morning. <laughs>